Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in time and space. Kenny is here with another new flights. Kenny is twenty twenty. That's my screen name on the forums, and then my real mundane name underneath there. And man, am I uh, really embarrassed for the last uh, several videos I've done, where um, I haven't made the transition over to. Uh, back to the simulator, and I'm forgetting to close the windows that are open, like Sky Vector, and uh, leaving you hanging for a long time. Anyway, I'm very, very embarrassed, and I'm very sorry about that. Uh, so what I've done is taken the time this morning to learn how to do auto scene transitions to try to m stop that from happening. What I'm talking about is, um, you know... Um, being over here on the Sky Vector website, let me pull that up. That's what I'm talking about here. Okay, so you're seeing the Sky Vector site now, and in OBS Studio, um, when you switch back over to Flight Simulator, it doesn't auto switch. You have to grab this little slider, and it uh, it, it does a studio transition thing like that, you know. And if you forget to do that, it's like, yeah, so I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm flying around and all you're seeing is that. Or that. So I'm, you know, in the other videos indicating, hey, check out this autopilot button, do this, do that, do that, and, you know, and you can't, and I'm sorry about that. So anyway, I learned how to do transitions, uh, automatic transitions. So now when I'm clicking on Microsoft Flight Simulator, it automatically changes. When I uh, change over to Sky Vector, it automatically changes. If I add a title in and I grab this, the titles won't, don't seem to be uh, automatic. And I slide the little slider over and change to a title. Good. Great. If I click back over to uh, Flight Simulator, there it is. So, uh, just wanted to give you that update so hopefully we won't have any more embarrassing stuff like that so the gps and manually entering uh gps fly points okay um when you first start flying and you're at your local airport find your home airport that you're going to be flying and learning in or wherever you want to fly in really uh but the place my dad trained at was Meadow Lake, and I want to I want to train there too one of these days. It's just down the well, just up the road a ways. Okay, so when you're a noob, they don't really I I don't think they really want you flying over cities and and uh, they don't want you flying through people's airspaces, and it's hard to kind of decipher what's going on. And you got to zoom in so close, and you, you know it it it's not the best VFR map at the moment. So that's why. I'm trying to show you Sky Vector. And in, in a plane, you can have this open on your iPad. And it's free. Okay? So let's zoom down to where I'm at. There's um, Here's Meadow Lake in Sky Vector. So as a noob, they're only going to let you fly right in here. In, you know, so you see all these other circles on the map or boundary areas that are marked off that looks, that looks like a coffin that's a military zone so it probably is a coffin if you enter into it um that is, i believe so on the map all these little circles here those are people's air spaces and denver look how huge their air space is and it's so impressive they've got a blue marking around it that means i'm a major airport you uh, should probably not enter this airspace unless you know absolutely what you're doing. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, you can get clearance using the ATC to, to travel into those areas. But as a noob, you probably better stay pretty low and, or know the rules about the different airspaces. And it's not hard. Just watch a video or two on airspaces, and then when you refer back to a map like this, you'll get it. These areas that are in red... Hazard zones, flight hazards, and they, they really don't recommend you fly in them. So back to being a noob. They're going to want you to fly in here a lot when you first start flying. Okay, so let's look at our options here. And how do we take this information here and create little fun pathways that we can travel around in our 
learning how to use the GPS to move around. All right. Well, the first thing you notice, and it's unmistakable, these blue lines, those are highways in the sky called Victor Airwaves, Airways. And each one has a number, like B108. This one here is a V4. V132, V148. All right. At the moment, I'm trying to figure out how to actually enter and get it to pull up the Victors. And, you, and we should be able to, and if not, at some point we will be able to, but we can still do some pretty neat things. So these at intersection points, there's usually a name with five letters, like here. Not It's right when we take off, we'll, we'll probably come here first. You see how it says A-D-A-N-E, Adane? That is the intersection point name. And we can enter that into the GPS and it will fly there. If we follow it along here, sometimes you've got little intersection points that don't cross with other points, but they still have names. There's Chiba. Love that. From Chiba, let's say we want to eventually go up to this Victor airway at 338 degrees. Well, we know that we can program in VORs, and that's those icons. So from Chiba, we can then plot to the Hugo VOR, HGO, and that's what we put in our GPS, HGO. Now I'm going to start entering all this, and you're going to want to fast forward through it, because clicking through the GPS takes some time. And it, this is a lesson in patience when you're learning how to use the Garmin G1000 as well. And there's a lot more to it, but we're going to keep it as noob as possible. So you can plot courses around the map. Okay, so from Hugo, once you fly directly over the, the radio station, you can turn to 338 degrees or any of these other directions, and you know that you're flying on a Victor Airwave to another intersection. Here's Quail. This intersection is called Lufsey. And then we could go back to the airport. So you see that we're flying. We could, we could build ourselves a little route to travel in to learn how to use the GPS and make a circuit. There's other places we could go to. We could find points down here. We could find points anywhere. And after a while, you'll start being able to map out, hey, I want to go to Las Vegas. Okay. And I don't want to get into anybody's airspace. Eventually, you'll be good enough to where you're like, okay, I don't want to keep flying circles anymore. I want to go here, and I want to go to this one, and I want to go to this intersection, and go to this one. And I'm going to show you how to start plugging those all in right now. Let's get back to Flight Simulator. Do these points exist in here? Yes and no. It seems most of them do. But if you zoom in all the way, they're not there. I don't appreciate... Things only showing up at certain view levels. It's it's too hard. Right? Okay, now you need to go down to your filters and go to the very last filter. Fix an RNAV position report on. Now you're going to see all those little white dots show up. But you have to zoom in really... You got to close this. Zoom in really tight for the damn names to show up. And that, that sucks. At least they're showing up now. Earlier, they weren't showing up. You had to click on them and hover over each one and click on it to make the name show up. So I'm glad that in a short period of time, they seem to have fixed that. Okay, so can we find the ones that we want to fly? Let's. Uh, that's Denver. So let's get back down to here. So is Lufsey on here? It should be. Now I've got to get now. Now they're not showing up again. See, that's a that's a real pain in the ass. Because, yeah, you have to see how far you got to be zoomed in for it to show up, and then, well, man, that's gonna. I don't even know where I'm at anymore. And, you know. It, it, I'm not easily able to identify 
where Luffy is or Donnie is and whip him. You know, I wonder, uh, maybe I could type this in in Sky Vector and see where it's at. W-I-P-U-N. Maybe it's in there. So coming back over to Sky Vector. What the hell was it? W-I-P-U-N. Clear this. W-I-P-U-N. So it gives us that fixed point. No, it doesn't give us, didn't give us the fix. Which is a great band, by the way, the fix. Do, do, do. Either way, they still exist in the GPS in here. I'm sure that it's they probably match. See, there's a Donne. Okay, so we got that. Is Chiba? Where's Chiba? There's Chiba. Okay, so we found two of them. Quail should be up here in Luffy, right? Lord. There's Lovesy. All right, we found it. Okay, so they do exist. Okay, where the hell's Quail now? Jeffel. Okay, well, we have points we can plot. And we have points we can plot inside and around these, these air spaces. Now, Microsoft is throwing out all kinds of lines in here, which are confusing you, because it seems like, well, now you've got all these other overlapping air spaces, and where the hell can I fly? So again, best to go back to Sky Vector and look, okay, and um, get your points off of here. All right, let's get to it. Let me set K fly as our takeoff point, and go fly. Do 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 do. I'm so happy I got the scene switching in. I'm sure you're like, thank God, thank God, thank God. He's an idiot. He is a noob. He is a, he's a noob. It took me a while to get my head around exactly how to do the switching thing. That was kind of weird. It's uh, still not loaded yet. Getting there. Well, let me raise my coffee. Hey, thank you for watching. And thank you for watching. Thank you for all the great compliments. Whoa. I don't know if you can hear him. He's really loud in my ear. Let me turn down my headphones. You should be barely hearing it. And hopefully that's the case, and it's not loud in your ears, too. At the moment in OBS, it shows it's just barely there. There's a storm outside. I haven't changed the weather. Okay, so we're ready to fly. Let's get to it, the, uh, the GPS, okay? Okay. So the first thing you want to do is come over here and hit flight plan. We're going to create a little flight plan. And I don't know if you can save these yet and delete them. Uh, that's stuff you're going to have to play with and I'm going to have to play with. In uh, other simulators, you can totally save. You can even import. So there's these guys know how to do all kinds of crazy stuff. I guess you can go out to certain sites and it'll generate a flight plan for you and you slap that flight plan into a Microsoft Simulator folder, come in here and load it, and it's done. But I'm I'm not there yet, so let's do it the way I, you know, at least get us going. So, flight plan. We've clicked the flight plan button and now we have this active flight plan and there's nothing in it. Right. Okay, now this knob down here is everything. There's two knobs stacked into one. Oh, so I would say big knob and little knob. Big knob, this is the back knob. Little knob is this front knob right here. All right. It also allows you to push on it. And when you push on it, it creates a cursor inside this window. All right. So right now I could spin these knobs and I'm going to get other things going on. But what I want to do is get inside that box. So click it. Okay. You've got a flashing cursor now. You know that you are in the box. Now, the little button allows you to input. So if I start rolling the little one, I start getting, and you know, it going through the alphabet and numbers. Okay. So on my map here, as I take off from here, I want to go to Adane. That's that first intersection point. So come back over here. 
we're using the little knob we've got a so now I want to go to the next position and I use the big knob and roll it one time it's very sensitive and then go back to the little knob D back to the big knob to go to the next position big knob to go to the next position ADA Adana ADA what is it ADA N E thank goodness for the switching ADA N E this is where you might want to you know go ahead you know scan ahead a few minutes and then hit enter okay oh you know what I did wrong I didn't put in our air our takeoff airport. I don't know that I absolutely have to. But okay, let's say you you've made a mistake. Use your the big mouse uh the big wheel button to move back up in the list and highlight Adane and hit the clear. Okay. So what I missed is you should enter where you're at. And that's the K-Fly airport. So little knob Get used to this. Said it's an exercise in patience. In the newer GPS, I guess you can just type it in. You know, touch screen. Dot, 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 K fly, enter, done. Nice. That's that's awesome. I've heard they've even got ones you can talk to. Enter Adani. That's. <laughs> I want one of those. But let's start. You know, we got to start somewhere. Okay, K fly. Why do you got to bother me when I'm I'm recording? I'm talking to a cat. They know. They know you're recording. They don't bother you like the whole month. Then as soon as you start recording, hey, pay attention. I want to be on air. Big knob. K fly, enter back to Adane. Do 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 do. Again, thank you for uh, watching the videos, all your comments, uh, telling me what I'm doing wrong, and I appreciate it. I'm not taking too hard. I'm a noob. I'm learning this. I'm doing the best I can. I'm having a good time at it, and. Uh, I'm glad that you're getting something out of it. I've gotten some nice compliments saying, I did, uh, you know, you explained it. Well, good. You helped clear that right up. Hey, thank you. And then you really screw that. This sucks. 13 minutes on this screen. You don't. Oh, no, oh, oh, no. Give it up. Adane. No, what the, I clicked it. Eighty-eight. There we go. It's touchy. All right. So, okay. There's our next point. We've got Adani, and we're making good headway. Chiba. We want to go over to Chiba now. You're going to end up doing this, too, and plotting courses all over the map and having a good time. There are some other things I've run into problems uh, that I haven't figured out doing this already, um, like making it activate a certain sequence in the leg, meaning that uh, once I got all this loaded in, it it changed the loading, it changed the loading uh, leg on me, and I can't, I couldn't figure out how to get it to restart. It'll probably happen again, so I'll get to explain it again. Oh yeah, I've already done this like three or four times and failed. But, you know, okay, hit record again and try it again and hopefully get through it this time. Okay, so there's Chiba. Now, from Chiba, I said let's go over to the, you know, let's try to get to the Hugo. Or actually, that one, that's, that's quite a ways. So maybe we'll just now make a a run back up for Luffsy. But know that initially I had us programmed to go all the way out to Hugo 
And so you can just type in HGO and it will pull up and go to that, that VOR. Okay, but right now we want to just go back to Lufsey. Love see. And then I just want to return back to the airport. Silly thing. Touchy. Can't fly. All right. So if I turn, click the flight plan button again to close this window. And if I zoom out, see that little route that we made? We did it. Okay. Now, again, how we get it to enter the Victor Airwaves, I'm I'm not completely certain yet. And I'll I'll as soon as I figure it out, I will do just one on entering Victor Airways. But always you're gonna end have to enter an entry point any any anyway to get to to get to enter a Victor Airway. So learning how to program these intersection in, in these intersections in is is just as important to know how to do. How to clear them. And again, in the flight plan, what I'm saying is, how do I activate it? Uh, earlier, this switched on me. It's, it says right now we're at KFly, and it's going to go down to Adane. For whatever reason, in my earlier attempts, it shifted, and it was starting in like Chiba and going to Lufsey. And I was like, well, how do you make it restart the thing? How do I get this back up to this position? And currently, um, I'm a little stuck. But right now we do know it's working. So if we let's get into the air, let's at least get going towards Adane when we take off. We'll engage the autopilot and we'll hit, we'll uh, set the altitude button to hold our altitude and then hit the nav button and see if it flies our route. Okay. Cessna 172 Skyhawk with the G1000. And hopefully that even in, in a base package, I don't know what you get in the base package, but hopefully they give you uh, one of the GPSs. Now there's an older one, which is a little tiny couple of little square windows, but it's basically the same thing. The buttons are, whoa, got a wind today. The buttons do the same thing. So in principle, it it's the same. So don't, you know, just because it's a little bit older GPS model, don't let it freak you out. And there's lots of people out there that are making videos on how they're supposed to work. But they're in, um, you know, like people in the forum saying, well, it's not working the way the real world ones work yet. I'm being blown. I'm, I'm being pushed. I think this is actually a right-hand traffic pattern, but to get into this pattern, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and do a left-hand traffic pattern exit and get up, get us some altitude, and then we'll engage and see what we get. I don't have the clouds on ultra; they kind of look like blobs. Yeah, not holding the proper pitch for the good climb. Tisk tisk. Let's make a turn. And we're kind of getting there altitude wise that uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about hitting the alt button and hitting the engage the autopilot. Hit the altitude hold button to hold our position. And now turn on nav.
<laughs> no, keep going the no. Turn back to the right plane. It's gotta. It's gotta find its zen. Give it a minute. <clears throat> The 500. Ma'am, you're telling us we're getting dangerously close to the ground? What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to go up. I'm going to adjust my um, altitude. The big knob is thousands of feet, small knob hundreds of feet. I want it to go up to 8,300 feet. Hit the flight level change button, and it should start taking us up and hold at 8,3. All the while, still following our course. Yep, yeah, doing good so far. Do, 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 do. If I had a co pilot, we could be going over our checklists. In route climb checklist airspeed 75 to 85 knots. Eh, we're going a little fast. Throttle full, mixture rich. Can't really do that here in Colorado. You lose power. If I do mixture rich on a climb, you hear the engine stall? We're at high altitude here. For optimum burn, you need to be around 49 to 50%. So, not check, sir. Engine gauges? Check. Taxi and landing lights above 1,000 feet? Off. Let's hide our joystick. Taxi lights are off, landing lights are off, navs on, strobes on, beacons on. Don't need any of this. Mixture, lean above 3,000 feet. That's right. Uh, pardon me a second. While we're, um, while we're climbing to 8,300 feet, keep your eye on the GPS. I've got to, I've got to deal with that cat for a second and let the cat in. The cat is freaking, freaking out. Say, okay, so... Keep your eye on that, and as it switches from uh, point to point, watch this over here. Watch this move. We'll be right back. Do, 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 do. All right. Mission accomplished. Cat dealt with. Mission accomplished. Did you see us pass over Adane and it moved on? It switched from K-Fly down here, and now it's on the Adane to Chiba leg. Now, I learned how to speed the simulator up a little bit, but it kind of freaks out when you do, so I'm only going to tap it once. Okay, maybe twice. Maybe three times. Let's go for broke. Sometimes it flips out and the plane starts flying all over the place. All right. Seems good so far. It's 
slow it down a little bit. I know, not the most exciting stuff, but it, but then again, it is. If you're thinking, I can do this, I can do this, you can. Uh, I've made lots and lots of mistakes. This it, Programming these in gets a little tricky. Now, these concepts, though, you do this well. These concepts are going to translate up to the big planes. And I know that that's where, you know, a lot of people, that's what they look forward to. They're like, okay, I want to learn how to do this. I want to fly. I want to learn how to fly one of the big planes. You still have to know how to enter stuff into the flight com computer. And with the ex exception of pushing some buttons, different buttons, it looks, you know, the, the layout's different and it doesn't, knobs, you know, either way, they're different. But at the same time, they're the same because you're going to be using the same information. So all this does apply towards working your way up to learn how to do the flight management computer or whatever uh, for the for the jets, the big airliners. And you're doing the same thing. You'll be putting in waypoints. You'll be putting in the Victor Airways. Uh, you'll be putting in fixes. Here we go. We're making our next turn. Uh, probably a good idea. I just look out the window anyway and just, you know, make sure that not that we can see anything anyway. No, can't see a darn thing. There's, yeah, well, at least we're seeing ground over there. I don't see any mountains in front of us. And on our radar, we can do topo maps, I believe. Let me, we know we got a long stretch to Lufsey, so uh, let me close the flight plan window. And this button down here, map. Oh, it's not giving us a whole lot of options. Well, there's Topo. Next rad should be weather radar. Yeah, weather radar. Bad weather. Bad, bad weather. Uh, we're doing instrument flight rules, so we really don't have to do pay attention to all the visual flight stuff. Like if, if this was just you know you're a noob, uh, they would just not they would not let you fly because you have to avoid clouds, be like five miles away from this cloud and a thousand feet below this cloud, and they don't want you anywhere near clouds. So, you know, basically today without being able to do instrument flying. They just won't let you fly. So you can definitely start practicing all this stuff in in this particular simulator. If you absolutely need 100% accuracy or at least close to, you know, right now, I'm sad to say, right at this minute, you might want to consider X-Plane. Will they address all this and does can this work like the real world i'm trying to discover that my next quest again is to try to find out how to do the victor airways normally when you're selecting your intersection point as soon as you select an intersection point it should give you the option to then load an airway and load a victor now in some videos they're saying well you you plug it in and then you should get a, a something popping up down here others are saying well no it'll appear in the it'll it will appear in the menu button which I'm not getting anything at all at the minute menu see I'm not even seeing it in the list here so they said well it'll be in the menu but in the menu right at the moment just as a generic I don't see load airway but I don't have something listed but I'm going to keep exploring that. Um, other than that, now the whole world is open to you to plot like a real pro. And you can use the plot points on the, the main world map. You can use the... I re definitely recommend using this because it gives you all your altitudes. 
If you're going to do it like the real world, for example, I want to go to Las Vegas a lot. And they really say you shouldn't take any passengers over 10,000 feet. One, it could cause problems. Two, the Cessna doesn't have oxygen. It's not pressurized. You would have to provide oxygen the entire time you're over 10,000 feet. Well, this whole way is 14, 13, 12, 10, and there's 10, 8. You're just not going to. There's no way you can avoid going over 10,000 feet trying to draw a straight line to Las Vegas. So you have to know your elevations and make your way down the mountain range. And, you know, it's not even worth it to try to find a cut path up through this way. So you still end up going the way a car does for the most part. If your passenger doesn't care, hey, go for it. We took, maybe it was because I was raised here. We used to take a lot of flights between here and Rock Springs. And in the early, in the late 70s and early 80s, it was a different world, man. We were a bunch of kids flying around with my dad between Colorado Springs and Rock, uh, between Rock Springs, Wyoming. And not once did anybody ever, ever bring up the subject of us all needing oxygen. That could explains, explain why we were all blue. And it was real easy to go to sleep. So you're going to want to have and learn to love Sky Vector for all your plotting, I think. If, you know, everything that you want to find, you can find here. If you, you know, as long as you know your destination, your departure airport, and your destination air airport, it'll just, it'll start plotting things for you. Uh, this is for, like, people that can learn how to, like, make their own list and import them. So you can drag this out here and create that same plan that we just created and get all these points. There's Orway. So if we click that, it'll line to that, that's that intersection point. So right now it's it's mapping the actual waypoints, and then I guess you can export these and import them into flight simulators. So you can create flight plans out here. If you need to find airports, you know or you know, you're not. You don't want to waste time trying to set stuff up. You just want to learn information about an airport. You can type in the name here. Uh, one of the best things about it is too is when you're learning to take off and land from certain airport airports, you need to know their procedures. Every airport, major airport, has its own procedures. So when you hover over and click on the airport airport pin. You get a bunch of weather station information, but you also get this. And when you hover over it, you get the airport diagram maps. You get all the landing documents. So for every runway, there's a landing document or two based on how you want to land. This is all instrument ILS or localizer. So if you're going to use instruments, you're going to want it pull up these PDFs. If you're using GPS, which we are, you're going to want to pull up these PDFs for the runways. If you have to follow, if they tell you, you need to enter using um, Spring 6 or depart using Spring 6. Those are like on ramps, on ramps and off ramps leading to highways from airports. And they have those mapped out in these maps. So when you're leave, when you're leaving Colorado Springs, you're going to end up going out on one of these routes before you can actually get onto the route you need. When you're arriving, they're going to have you come in and take these exit ramps. That's what these arrival PDFs are for, that information. So the more you delve into this, the more intricate it gets, but it's all it, it's all there. It's all working. And in um and in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, they do have SIDS and STARS. So when you go out to the main menu and you flight plan, hey, check that out. It's flown the whole route while we were talking, and we're already heading back to the airport. All right. It works. It works. It works. It works. So that's a success. Let me take you back out and show you what I'm talking about as far as the SIDS and the STARS. 
you have to designate from the main menu what type of flying you're going to do. Visual flying or instrument flying. And if you choose to do instrument flying, it's going to set you up with pathways that are based on those PDFs. Okay, so we're, let's say we're going to go from, from uh, Colorado Springs, which has departures and arrival maps. So it's a major airport in Denver. It's not far. Okay. Uh, when you... Oh, we have over here. Hey, where's it at? Where's our options? We should be getting an option here to do visual flight or visual flying or, or instrument flying. What's going on, man? There it is. You have to actually pl plug them in. Okay, now we get a drop down here. Visual flight rules or instrument flight rules. Low altitude airways, which is the victors, and I think the high ones are still victors, but they, you know, there's lows and highs. Could be wrong there. So, all right. And when you select an IFR, now you get those SIDs and STARS. That's what they're called standard departures and standard arrivals, STAR SID. So, right, this would be a. SID, standard departure. So the ATC might say, you know, take one of these. So you have to, let's say they said, take that one. That's the exit ramp. Once we get into the air, that's the exit ramp procedure we have to take to get out to the highway. Denver, when we're coming in for, let's say, that runway, ATC might say, Uh, oops. ATC might say, uh, here's the runway, that we need one of these. Those are the proper, or the all the different on-ramps, off-ramps that they have going into Denver. So, the, you know, they might tell us that, you know, use quail. So probably not. We're probably going to go all over the place. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't I didn't check these. Look at this route. It's got us flying from Colorado Springs. We have to fly way out here. Hey, there's Donnie and Chiba again. Then we go to Hugo, where I wanted to go initially. Connell, Quail, Quail, Jeffel. Then we're going to swing back in towards Denver and hit these points. Boss. Pause, Breck, Vale, Free. You get the idea. It's going to have us follow all of these down to our runway. And then, if we wanted to be fancy, there's the ILS to plug in uh, the ILS frequency of that runway 111.100. If we input that into our navigation radio, and as we're approaching, hit the approach button, yada, 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 magic it takes us down to the runway. So between the combination, now you understand how to input the GPS, and in an earlier video, you learned how to do the autopilot landing. Now you can start building some really great flight plans, okay? So now you know how to take off, put your way around based on these points, Pull up the maps, the ILS uh, and arrival charts for the run, the airport that you want to go to. How to find the the ILS frequency either here or from the main menu and right down before you fly. And using that information, how to make the plane do an autopilot landing. Not too bad for some noobs, huh? Uh, <laughs> I hope you go out there and start building yourself some routes to fly in and 
fly your pattern around your home and get, you know, every morning I'd get up. Okay, let's do it again. Let's run our route. Let's run our route because you're going to, that's what they're going to make you do in the real world. So get up and run your route, run your route. Okay. I'm ready to break free coach. I'm ready to break free. I'm ready to go someplace else and then get it all planned out, get it all planned out, written on paper. And, uh, so when you sit down at the GPS, it makes things easier or plot as you go. However you like flying. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, watching. This is, uh, been Kinius and noob flights. Again, that's my name on the forums. That's not my real name, but I've been using that since like 1993, since I've been online. I've never really changed my screen name. I have always used the same one. I've always been Kinius, but this year I'm Kinius 2020. And, uh, the, but that's the real me down there underneath that. And then this has been, uh, manually entering GPS points. Uh, I hope you like it. If you know how to uh, use the GPS well and you know how you figured out how to enter in Victor Airwaves, uh, please leave us all a comment in the comments box. Leave us a link to how you did it and a video to how you're doing it so we can praise you and throw laurels at you. And uh, show us some neat tricks. Show us some more. Get us get us plotting better. Um, yeah. And we will like and subscribe you too. And cheers. Have a wonderful evening. I got to uh, play some more with the GPS and figure out what the next video is going to be.